Well, their turnover rate shifted down from like 70% to like 40% overnight because of that survey. Then they hired a dream manager. And what the dream manager did is he met, his full-time job was he met with every employee and set goals with them and helped them achieve their goals. And their turnover rate dropped from like 40% down to like 10 All right, everyone, welcome to the Benj and Sailor Show. Today, we will be discussing how to keep employees happy. That's not an easy thing to do. No, I, I, don't, I don't think it is. employees are humans, and humans fluctuate with their emotions every single day. So I think maybe to be more specific, it's how to keep your employees in an overall state of happiness when they think about their job. They come to their job, they love their job, they're grateful for what they're doing every single day, and they really like it there. I think one thing that's important just to say right out of the bat is it's like, even if you love your job, it's your passion, you're doing exactly what you love, you're not going to love it every day. And I wanna get rid of that myth that it's like, oh, once you find something that you love, something you could do for the rest of your life. Well, hate to break it to you, but that just doesn't exist. You could find what you love and love it for the rest of your life, but there will be days when you hate it. It just can't happen. Yeah. And the reason why is because we're human. We have emotions, we have bad days, we wake up on the wrong side of the bed. It just it just happens. Like so me. It happens to me a lot. I usually like happens to everyone, <laughs> Sailor. You're pointing at me. I can feel it. No, I'm not. I actually wasn't pointing at okay. you. And um, he usually wakes up really happy. He's like wakes up ready to go, ready to get stuff done, and it takes me about two hours to wake up. I'm not happy that I've been woken up or that I have to wake up. Yeah. But Waking anyway, up can be hard. Yeah. It, it, it's a choice. As soon as you wake up, it's your choice whether you want to be See, in a good I mood or I feel like, yes, but at the same time, really hard. I think it's easier for me. No, no, it's harder for me to feel happy in the morning. Why? I have no idea. I'm just saying I really do think for some reason you can just wake up and you can be happy. Uh, same with Emerald. There's been times where I've walked into her room. Still sleeping, I sit on the couch, and like on my phone, and she'll wake up, the door will be wide open, and she'll just walk out, and she'll just be, start playing. <laughs> she doesn't stop like, playing. Like nothing happened, like all of a sudden she just woke up and left. Like there's not a moment where she's like, Yeah, she's like, not grumpy. Oh, like, grumpy. It's actually awesome. Up. It's actually yeah, really it, it cool. It is nice, but. But the, the, the con of it is when she wakes up at 7 a.m. Yeah, she's ready to go. And you want her to go back to sleep. She doesn't go back to sleep. And she, she, like she wakes up. Either. She's up. Yep. So she's not like going to bed and she's not going to like sit on your lap and nope. chill for a little bit. No. She wants her milk. She wants to be fed. She wants to play. Yep. And you better be ready to play. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, going, Anyways, going, going back, back to it. To it. Going back to it. Recently, these last what, four full months of us working together, mm -hmm. um, we, we've been working. We've had hard days. We've had long days. And we've had days that just sucked. But it's been so fun. And the reason why it's been so fun is because we have those struggles. And that's what I believe when people say, like, find something that you love. Well, if you really love something, it's not always going to be like this. Because that just doesn't exist. Love is, you're going to have a love-hate relationship with whatever it is. Because that's how you strengthen your relationship with what it is that you're doing. That's how you grow. That's how you become better. That's how you learn to love it. Yeah. Like, imagine if... You married someone. Like, imagine if we got married and every idea I came up with, you just went with it. Mm -hmm. And you'd never said, no, you know, I disagree. Or, or you just, okay, yeah, sounds good, baby. Whatever you want. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't actually ever grow our relationship with each other. And I wouldn't ever truly probably be myself. No. Because... Same thing with work. If you go to work, you're not going to love something that's easy. You're going to love something that pushes you, that makes you grow. So when you have those hard times at work... That's when you're actually going to learn to love it the most because it actually helped you grow. But if it's just easy and it's all handed to you, you're never going to grow. And that's when you're not going to enjoy it. I think when I, there's, I don't know who said it, but they said something along the lines of when you are regularly unhappy about something, it's usually because the potential and that certain thing isn't being reached. So if you're in your job and you aren't happy, it's usually because your subconscious knows you can do better. Wow. And knows that you should be doing something else. And same thing with example, like your marriage, right? For after a long time, you're just, you maintain this like unhappiness about it. You know that something needs to change and it needs to change because you know it's not supposed to be like that. You've seen other examples of how, how people are better. Your subconscious your mind remembers those things. And so it's constantly telling you, hey, you're unhappy because this is not the way it's supposed to be and it needs to change. That is such a great point. That is a really, really good point. Yeah, that shout everyone, out to whoever that everyone said needs, that. Everyone needs to hear that. Unhappiness doesn't come from like a miserable experience coming to you. It comes from you knowing the potential of the situation and not achieving it. 100%. 
Yeah, I learned something new today, Sailor. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I think it's just a God-given almost instinct a God put into our minds. Hey, you yeah. can do better and you can be better. And if you're not achieving something, then you should probably move on. Like I remember when I was at, I worked for Winco for like four months, but You've basically- had, Yeah, that was your nine to five. That was my nine to five experience. And I worked for Winco. So I was in there, uh, it's, it was a section of HR. So basically what I would do every day I did this every day. There was little to no change about this. Winco stores would collect information when they hired someone. Paperwork, right? They would send it to their corporate office where I worked at. And I would go through it. I would make sure there was no mistake. And I would input that into a computer system. I did that every day. I mean, I was a freaking like good, like I was just like working through these paperworks, like just checking, checking, checking. Because it was like, tasks like that for me are really easy. Really simple stuff where like you can just grind it out. Yeah, it only How do you just, call that? What do you call that? It's almost like you're a robot. It takes hardly the, any thinking. I, so I did that for four months. Every day, nine to five, I had a 30 minute lunch break. And then that was it. <laughs> like 30 minutes for lunch. I was scarfing down my lunch. And by the way, I'm sitting from nine to 12, sitting in a chair almost the whole entire time tapping on the computer. Then I get 30 minutes for lunch. And then I get nine to five every day of course like you had your bathroom breaks and stuff but like i did that for four months and i don't know how someone could do that there are people working there that, that have done that for years how much were you getting paid i was getting paid twenty dollars an hour no way yes i was were you really yes all i remember is you get your, was 18. I get your you get your paycheck and it was only like 600 bucks no but yeah <laughs> you got paid weekly remember oh yeah you got paid that. weekly and so <laughs> either 18 or 20 bucks an hour i can't remember but the point of the story is that i did that for four months and i couldn't handle it people that had worked there for a really long time they were the type of people where like i stayed two minutes past five they were like hey what are you still doing here i'm like oh i just so as soon as just, five hits even if they were in the middle of something oh, well i don't they, know they turn it off. I, i'm not saying exactly that but they were like why are you working like l later for the matter you know i want to finish this before i go home why can't i stay here and finish this you know it was just the atmosphere of someone doing that task over and over again for years like it was just terrible that was my experience so relating that to how do you keep your employees happy it's not by doing that every day there are some things that have to get done someone has to file the paperwork but i don't think someone should stay in that position for a long time that would be so incredibly hard i know for me one of the main thing I didn't get is like, this could like be digitalized in an instant and eliminate four other people's jobs. Why were they not doing that? Maybe for like the security reasons. Yeah, I, 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 I totally get that. But at the same time, like the whole time I was, I was there, I was like, there has got to be another way to do this because I know they couldn't keep someone in my position. And, and I guess the topic just goes really into turnover too. Like if you can keep employees happy, your turnover rate is going to be very, very low. Yeah. Well, and relating it to, to real estate, we have someone, one of our mentors in real estate talks about how you don't make money in real estate when you get someone to rent for the first time. You make money in real estate when you get someone to renew. Because the cost that it takes to find a new tenant is extremely high. And so when, we, when we're on this, these calls, he's doing everything he can to keep someone. A good, a good of course, tenant in the, these apartments, but he's doing everything he can. Yeah, he wants people to live there for their whole life. Yeah. If, if, he, if he could get them to. Like, think of, think of all the costs that go into trying to get someone to rent out an apartment. You have to take the time to go post those things on whatever platforms you have, Zillow, apartments.com, your own little website you have for yourself, Facebook, social media in any way. That's a long freaking time to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, well, not even that. You have to bring them in. The apartment has to look clean all over again. Yeah. And it has to keep looking clean the longer yeah, you get it. So you're gonna have, you might have to clean it a couple times. You invite them in, you show them the whole place. Like you could do that and, it, and you could waste 30 minutes to an hour doing that and they could not even get the apartment. Yeah, you're totally right. That's that's a huge point. Yeah, and you're say you're paying the employee twenty dollars an hour. You lost twenty bucks an hour at the hour. You gotta do that for a whole entire time between nine to five. That's like, that's all they work on is trying to get that apartment rented, and they work for twenty bucks an hour. That's what eight times twenty. Eight times twenty, whatever that is. One sixty. One hundred sixty dollars yeah. every day that you lose, and you also paid someone to come clean if you didn't clean it yourself, and you have to constantly be updating it to make it look nice for someone more appealing to come into the apartment. When the people that are already living there, like they get to stay in there and you make a little improvement, they're fine. Or they just stay in there and you don't have to make any improvements. The cost of having high turnover in your business is killing your business. Yeah. And you may not even realize that. I think the hardest thing about it too is it's, it's hard to track. It's really hard to track the turnover rates because you have to go in there and get all like the little fine details, right? Yeah. But when it comes to like training employees 
and just having to put time into employees to like actually make them be able to do their job and then yeah. them just them just quitting it's really hard to track that time you can track how much you paid your employee right but you can't track really how much your employee didn't get work done or how effective their work was so it's it's just hard to track turnover mm -hmm. yeah, and that's why i think easy. it kills businesses because it's just a really hard thing to manage yeah i read this book one time called the dream manager I told you about that book. Yes, I think it so. was a fantastic book. It was so good. Basically, I'll, I'll tell it short, tell it really quick. So there's this janitorial company, and they would oh, have like yes, 400 employees story. at a yes. time, and the turnover rate was crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like 70 percent, literally like over 70 percent of their employees year after year were leaving, and they'd get more. I mean, it was insanely easy to hire, so it could work. So they tried to figure it out, and they put ran surveys to see like what would make people stay more. And the answer they got from them is if they had a way, if they had transportation provided. Now, everyone lived into the city. It was in Chicago. So what they did is they created bus routes where they'd pick up all the employees. Well, their turnover rate shifted down from like 70% to like 40% overnight because of that survey. Then they hired a dream manager. And what the dream manager did is he met, his full-time job was he met with every employee and set goals with them and helped them achieve their goals. And their turnover rate dropped from like 40% down to like so they gain they literally drop 60 percent of turnover rate just from those two things imagine being a dream manager of a company I know. where all you do is bring people in and just talk to them about their goals that's like that's like a dream job i know i would you love would, if you were to get a job and it really liked what you were that. doing i know that you i would, would like that. oh that would be so great i mean the hardest part of it all would just be to see people's potential and not be able to help them see it and wish it upon them when they can't understand it but or, like or them seeing it and, and not just wanting not it caring. Yeah. And not wanting it. I mean, we all had that kid in high school, right? Where if you looked at him, you're like, dude, if you just freaking worked hard, you know where you could be? But they just didn't care. And so that I think would be the hardest part about being a, that, that right there would be the hardest part of, about being a, being a dream manager. Being a dream manager. People but just not caring enough. I think hiring a dream manager, if you can afford to pay someone an extra 60, 70 grand a year, hire a dream manager. Someone who just manages your employees' goals. That right there is a really good way to keep employees happy. I don't think you need to necessarily go out and pay someone to do that full time. Depends on how big it, you are. It depends on how big you are, but if that's just like, say for instance, if that is just a quarterly thing that you do as a CEO of your small business, you met with each employee and you're like, hey, how are you doing? What do you want to achieve in life? Okay, how can, what why can I do? Here? Why are you here? Why are you here? What do you want to work for? What position do you want to be in? Okay, you want Steve's job? Okay, well, here's what you need to do. Yeah. Okay, hey Steve, what do you want to do? Okay, I want I want Merrill's job. Okay, Steve, you want Merrill's job? This is what you need to do to get there, right? Yeah. Constantly having those conversations with your employees and explaining to them or expressing to them that hey, that is possible for you. Yeah, you hey, can. You hey, can Steve, get I want wrong. you to have Merrill's job actually, because Merrill wants a different job, and eventually, like, people are gonna get bored of what they do, and I want to keep you guys. Okay, now let's actually get into like the nitty gritty, some actionable things that people listening to this podcast can do to increase their employees' happiness in their job specifically. Because number one, like there are some things that you can't control as an owner in employees' lives. Like you can't necessarily control their family life at home. You necessarily can't control what they believe, what their religious beliefs are or external factors in their life, but things you can control, let's talk about that and what they can do. I think creating a place where people can thrive is huge. Okay, so what does that mean? Meaning when you come to a place, there is opportunity for raises. Or you don't come to this place and you get this position and you're like, oh no, you're not going to ever be able to be promoted. If there's opportunity for a raise, people are going to gonna want to work there more because they know there's an opportunity for them to make more money. Okay, well you talked about in a recent short, don't work for a raise, work for a growth opportunity. Somewhere where you can, where if you get that position, you are learning more. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree with that. But not everyone does. Not yeah. everyone agrees with that. So like, that's how I think. But if people are just working for more money, then you're going to want to find a job where there's opportunities for a raise. And not just for the money, for the growth. Yeah, I think, I see what you're saying. Like, I for sure think there People need to be able to see that as they grow, they do get a raise. But I think at the very beginning, that is almost a trivial thing to really think about. I think humans generally, yes, consciously, they want a raise and they want to work for more money. But I think subconsciously, what people really want is they want an opportunity to grow. They want an opportunity to increase the potential that they have and to increase their skill. Yeah, and I think that's when you'll get more engaged employees too, when they're there because they want something out of it. And they want to be able to grow in that environment. Yeah. Something else that I think if you are wanting to increase your employees' happiness, something you need to do is you need to get to know your employees. Yeah. 
people stay because of relationships. For instance, we have this pest control guy. I created a relationship with him. Not a uh, yeah, personal, you, personal relationship. But, no, no, no. But we talk. Every time he comes over, we talk. He shares a little about his life. I share a little bit of my life, right? He's this 40, 50-year-old dude. Anyway, there's been other times where I've been like, I don't really want to have him come over like as often as he is coming over. But I don't have the heart to call him up and say, hey, can you stop coming over? Because I've created this personal relationship with him. Which, and I don't want him to feel like I Which can also like be I a bad him. thing. That okay, I know that's a bad, a bad thing. thing. But that's how humans work. So if you're wanting to include, keep your employees there for longer, then I think you really do need to get to know them. Well, there also has to be a balance between a, a business relationship and a personal relationship. Because if you're friends with someone, okay, yeah, you don't want to get personal, them? but you don't want to get yeah. So get to know them, get to know who they are and what motivates them. But remember that you still need to keep it professional. Yes, yeah, I agree. And there's a there's a line, there's a really fine line of, of what you can do with your employees to to keep them happy. Well, that sums up this episode. Yeah, sorry. Um, it was pretty short. We actually didn't get into uh, how to keep your employees happy for very much. I think we talked about it. I think there's a lot of stuff to learn in here. I know. There's a lot of value, but I, there's the a lot more I want to say. The line you said at the beginning, that if anyone watches this podcast and knows that line, they got something out of it. Yeah. Thanks for checking it out. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Yep. Bye.